Hello students, it's Mr. Bornheimer, and this morning I'm going to be talking to you about how to do mole conversions. All right, now the very first thing you must know when you're doing mole conversions is your mole roadmap. And the mole roadmap starts with the mole, okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the mole here. And there's usually two things mainly that we're converting to. There's more, um, but we haven't got to them yet. The first thing that you're going to try to be converting to are things called representative particles. We'll call them RP. And then you're also going to be converting to mass. Now, things that constitute or that we primarily are dealing with as far as mass would be like grams. Okay, so anytime we're converting to grams. Representative particles gets a little trickier. Any particle um, that we're thinking of, and when we're dealing with particles, we're dealing with any uh, composition of something. So, for instance, a molecule would be a particle. An H2O molecule is one particle of water. Um, one atom of carbon would be a particle, it would be an atom. So words that we associate with representative particles would be like atoms, molecules, compounds, and ions. So dealing with all of these as representative particles. Okay, an atom's a particle, a molecule's a particle, a compound, an ion. And then we have the mole, obviously, in the center. <clears throat> and we use the units of M-O-L for mole. We don't add the E because we don't want to confuse it with the furry little creature. All right, now, when we are going and working with this mole roadmap, uh, we might want to take mass and convert it to moles. And then we might want to go ahead and uh, take moles and convert to particles. Or we might want be given a certain number of atoms, we want to find the moles of that, and then convert the, or find the mass of that amount of substance. So we can see that we're going back and forth, and that's why this is called the road map. And maps, I mean, maps help us find things. They help us to find, where, they help us to see where we're at. All right, so what do we have? And they also help us to see where we're going, or what are we trying to find. Okay, these are the two things we have to ask ourselves when we're, when we're solving problems. What do I have? And what am I trying to find? Now, when you are given a mass and you are going two moles, okay, what you are going to want to do is divide Okay, and you're going to divide by the molar mass. Okay, so we're dividing by molar mass. If I have a mole of something and I want to know how much mass it is, okay, then I would multiply by the molar mass. So if I'm going to moles, I'm dividing. If I'm going away from moles, I'm multiplying. Now over here, if I'm given like let's say one mole of something and I want to know how many representative particles that is, well, we actually have a little bit of insight here. We know that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So if I have two moles, I would multiply this number by two. If I had three moles, I'd multiply this by three. I'm converting from moles to particles. Okay, so if I had two moles, I would multiply by this number here. And that would give me my answer. So if I'm going from moles to particles, I multiply. So if we go back here, if I'm going from moles to particles, I'm going to go ahead and multiply. If I'm going from particles to moles, I'm going to do just the opposite. I'm going to divide. And when we're working between moles and particles, we use Avogadro's number. Okay, this is Avogadro's number right here. So I'm going to go ahead and either multiply or divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So on this side, I'm working with molar mass. On this side, I'm working with representative particles. Okay, so a couple of things here. We are going to go ahead and work through a couple of problems. Let's say that I have two moles 
of carbon. And we'll say that I have two moles of carbon atoms. And I want to know exactly how many atoms that is. Okay? So my two things that I'm I've got to find here. I've got to either I've got to look at what I have and what I'm trying to find. I have two moles. I'm trying to find atoms. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our problem and say, okay, there's two moles of carbon. Now, it doesn't actually matter if I'm working with carbon or whatever, because according to my roadmap, the only thing that matters when I'm converting between moles and particles is this number right here, which is the same no matter what I'm working with. So I could be working with anything, and two moles would be exactly the same. So I know that one mole right here is equal to this many particles. That is what we call our conversion factor. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, okay, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and in this case, atoms. Now I'm going to see two things happen here. I'm going to see my units of moles cancel because of the uh, dimensional analysis that we're doing here. And then I'm going to say I'm going to be left with 2 times this, and I'm going to be left with atoms as my unit. Okay? So 2 times this would be uh, 1.204 times 10 to the, can you take a guess? It would have originally been 12. I would have moved the decimal left after doing the scientific notation. Okay, this is kind of like a review. So what would have happened? Our exponent goes up, and it's not supposed to be a 9. I don't know what happened there. Okay, 10 to the 24th. So, that being said, now we have apply our units of atoms, and that is our answer. I've converted moles to atoms. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do next. Let's say that I have been given 13.0 uh, grams of H2 gas. Okay, now this is hydrogen gas. All right, and so I go to my road map and I say, okay, I have mass. The only thing I can find is moles. Okay, so let's go ahead and find moles. So I'm going to start with what I know. I have 13.0 grams of H2 gas. And I need to find, according to my road map, notice how we keep going back to the road map. If I'm going from mass to moles, I need to know molar mass. Okay, well, this value comes right off the periodic table. So in order to find molar mass, I need to go to my periodic table. And I go to the periodic table and I say, okay, hydrogen has a mass or a molar mass that is equal to 1.01 grams per mole. However, hydrogen gas is H2, not just H. So H2 really means that I have two atoms of hydrogen or twice or two times as much hydrogen. Therefore, instead of having 1.01 grams per mole, H2 has a molar mass 
of two hydrogens added together. Okay, and so it becomes 2.02 grams per mole. So now I have my molar mass, and I can take it and put it back on the slide that I need, which is this one. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my conversion. And I now know that there are 2.02 grams per one mole. It's another way to write the molar mass, grams per one mole. So if I look at this, I say, okay, I've got grams in the top. I must put grams in the bottom. So 2.02 grams per one mole. Now notice what's going to happen here. Yes, the grams are going to cancel. Okay, but I'm going to take 13 and I'm going to have to divide by 2. Well, if we go back to our road map, if I'm going from mass to moles, I divide. That's exactly what's happening here. So I take my 13 and I divide by 2.02. And for those of you who are working through this with me, you should definitely have your calculating device. So I'm going to go ahead and take 13, divide by 2.02, and that is 6.44. So what that tells me is I have 6.44 moles, because grams canceled out, I'm left with moles, of H2 gas. Now, we could take this one step further, and we could say, okay, now that I have moles of something, how many particles is that? How many molecules, notice I'm using a different particle here, not atoms, how many molecules of H2 is that? Well, I could say that I have 6.44 moles, and I want to convert that to molecules. Well, I know that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So I go ahead and just multiply the two numbers. So if you take out your calculating device and you take that number that you previously calculated and multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you get 3.87 times 10 to the 24th molecules. And now we have taken something, and we've taken it from moles to particles. We've taken something from mass to moles. We've taken something from moles. Uh, and, and yeah, we've done those calculations. There is the, we can use our roadmap to go a number of different ways. We could go from particles to moles to grams. We could go grams to moles to particles. Um, however, you cannot make the jump. If we go back to our roadmap, we can see this. You cannot convert between mass and particles. It cannot be done. There is no conversion. You have to go through moles. And that's what makes the mole so useful to us. It allows us to t find the quantity of atoms and eventually calculate the mass. And what we'll see is when we're measuring out chemicals in the lab, we'll be able to calculate the mass of those chemicals, and then we'll know the number of atoms. And the beauty here is knowing the number of atoms will tell us how much reacts and how much is produced, and this will lead into a unit called stoichiometry, which we'll get to later this semester. So if you have any questions about this, you can comment or you can send me an email. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Bye.